3D printers have come a long way in a short time. The features have increased, prices have decreased, and competition has intensified tenfold. But if we rewind the clock just a few short years, the market looked very different. At this time, Prusa was still the market leader with their Mark III. Other printers, like the Creality Ender 3 or the Anycubic i3 Mega, offered a lower cost alternative, but didn't boast any advanced features. Then came a new player, Artillery. The launch of their flagship X1 shook up the market. It was bigger than the alternatives and faster too, while remaining affordable. In many ways, this launch was akin to the launch of the Bamboo X1C in more recent history. New users flocked to the X1, intrigued by its then novel features, like a color touch screen and tidy ribbon cables. This interest was bolstered by the pandemic, which saw many makers growing their printer fleet for the purpose of producing PPE face shields, ear savers, and other pandemic relief supplies. The X1 was the logical choice, cheap yet effective. At first, it got the job done, but then issues started to arise. None of the cables had strain relief, causing shorts on the ribbon cable and broken connections to the heated bed after a moderate amount of use. The glass bed also left something to be desired. It needed to be manually leveled and was rarely flat. Prints either stuck too well or not well enough. So a lot of upgrades were required to get the machine to a state where it was usable and reliable. Then came the successor. The X2 added strain relief for the cables, a clone VL touch for bed leveling, and injection molded plastic to cover the previously exposed PCBs, a feature it inherited from the X1's younger brother, the Genius. The X2 was a nice refresh, but the allure had started to fade. More and more printer manufacturers were releasing their next generation machines. In recent history, we've seen an influx of high-performing printers, with the general trend in the industry towards Core XY kinematics and Clipper firmware. Then comes the Sidewinder X3. Some things have changed while others remain the same. It's still a bed slinger. It's still got aluminum extrusions and V-slot wheels. The familiar ribbon cables are there too, properly strain relief this time. The glass bed and touch probe of the X2 are replaced by spring steel and an inductive probe. The spring steel is coated on both sides with textured PEI. The heated bed has a hardware and cable with internal strain relief. No limit switches are present because the X3 now uses sensorless homing. The Z-axis is largely unchanged, retaining the dual motors linked by a belt on top, ensuring the X gantry remains parallel to the bed. Artillery's patent pending Z couplers have also returned. These are intended to reduce Z banding by decoupling the horizontal motion of imperfect lead screws from the vertical motion of the gantry. This was a topic of debate on the X1, with some users having better results with these removed. The X1 and 2 had a clone E3D Titan for the extruder, with a single drive gear. The idler arm was exposed, with tension hand adjustable via a knob. The X3 has a dual gear direct drive extruder. The entire unit is enclosed, with tension adjustment now requiring a hex wrench. The familiar volcano style heat block of the X1 is replaced by something more akin to the bamboo hot end. Unlike the bamboo, however, the X3 nozzle is removable. The nozzle on the X3 appears to be proprietary, deviating from the standard volcano form factor. While the X3 is supplied with a spare nozzle, it's not supplied with the tool to change it, which definitely feels like an oversight. The hot end is now all metal, an upgrade over the PTFE lined hot end of the X1 and 2, bumping the maximum printing temperature up to 300 from 260. The part cooling fan remains at 4020, but the shroud is now integral, molded together in a single piece, requiring that the fan be replaced if one desires to use an aftermarket shroud. The white nozzle light of the X1 is replaced by an RGB status light, which changes colors according to the heating state of the hot end. A second light on the top frame enhances visibility in dark environments. The biggest change comes in the screen and firmware. The static screen is replaced by a larger movable one, connected by a telephone style wire and secured in its dock by a magnet. The UI has undergone a major redesign. The colored graphics are replaced with a more minimalist aesthetic. As we poke around the menu, we see we have options for linear advance and resonance compensation. This might lead one to believe that this machine is running Clipper, but it's in fact running one of the most recent releases of Marlin firmware. As of version 2.1.2, Marlin has supported input shaping. Compared to Clipper, Marlin's implementation is more simplistic, with no support for accelerometer-based tuning and a smaller selection of shaping functions. 
From the screen on the Sidewinder, we can adjust the frequency of the shaper for X and Y. Some pre-populated values will act as a starting point, but no instructions are provided on how to calibrate these values. Advanced users will be familiar with the process of printing a tuning tower and identifying the resonant frequencies by eye. This works, but it's way less user-friendly than the process on clipper-based machines. The other interesting feature of the X3 is the new purge chute at the rear of the bed. This appears to have been directly inspired by the Bamboo X1C, with the wiper looking almost identical. Since this isn't a multicolor capable printer, the function here is just to clean the nozzle. Unfortunately, in my testing, it didn't work. During the wipe move, the printhead moves too far to the right, allowing the purge chute door to close, and resulting in a crash when the printhead moves back in the opposite direction. Artillery's technical support, while friendly and helpful, were unable to provide a solution to this issue, which in reality should be an easy fix with the altered G-code. While the purge chute may seem neat at first, I don't really see the point in it. Any ooze from the nozzle will be taken care of by the purge line at the start of the print. Only if the nozzle was being used for probing would cleaning it be necessary. So while it's nice in theory, it seems like more of a gimmick than something actually useful. Last but not least, let's take a look under the hood. Warranty void if broken. I don't think review units have warranties, so the brains of the operation is a custom 32-bit control board. The stepper drivers are silent and hardwired to the board, with the exception of one unpopulated port, the use case for which is unclear. A supercapacitor aids in power loss recovery, and in classic artillery fashion, all of the connectors are hot glued in place. The power supply is unbranded, with no exposed voltage toggle, so don't expect to easily transport this to another country with different mains voltage. Not much else to see here, so let's get to printing. Print files will need to be transferred the old-fashioned way, using a micro SD card. The USB Type-A port of the X1 has been replaced by a USB-C port, which is arguably a downgrade, since most flash drives still use USB-A. There is no connectivity on board, no Wi-Fi, and no Ethernet. What year is it, anyway? On the supplied SD card, we have a 17-minute Benchy and a 32-minute Benchy. Upon starting the first print, I noticed that nothing was sticking. That's because the Z offset was too high. The setup guide left off this critical step. Fortunately, the process was easy. With that resolved, I sent the print again. The results were fine, entirely mediocre, not terrible, and not spectacular. The 32 minute Benchy didn't look much better. In some ways, it actually looked worse. Next, I tried this pre sliced sword file. I watched the first few layers go down, then went to bed. I came back the next morning to a plate of spaghetti. The print had detached from the bed. The part of the print that did complete successfully looked okay, although I did notice some subtle bend. At this point, I decided to try slicing my own file. Artillery provides their own version of Cura in order to slice files for the X3. Unfortunately, it's only provided as a Windows executable and there's no Mac version available. The profile they supply prints a Benchy in one hour and nine minutes. The fast profiles are nowhere to be found. Not only that, but the start code doesn't even use the purge chute. <sighs> so at this point, I decided I'd had enough with this printer. When Artillery reached out and offered to send this to me, I showed interest, drawing on the nostalgia I felt for the X1. But then I thought to myself, you know what? I have more printers than I have time right now. And I knew that after finishing this review, this printer wouldn't have a permanent home in my collection. At this point, I've respectfully told them that I was not interested, and to be frank, I said, look, I don't think I can give this a good review. It's just not innovative enough. They then replied informing me the printer had already been sent. So I said, all right, I'll give it a shot. After all, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, or in this case, a printer by its appearance. I just can't get excited about this style of printer anymore, no matter how sleek it looks. I've been spoiled by the Clipper Core XYs, and Artillery themselves have already announced they're jumping on that bandwagon. They announced the X4 alongside the X3, and it appears to be better in every way. Linear rails, clipper, and wireless connectivity. It's also done away with the ribbon cables, replacing them instead with an umbilical style cable bundle and a textile sleeve. Interestingly, they're also including the Z-axis stabilizer bars on the smaller Pro model in addition to the larger Plus model, presumably to account for the increased vibrations at higher print speeds. The price tag is $100 higher, but that seems well worth it. So that leaves me with the question, why does the X3 exist? To be fair, I say the same thing about the myriad of Ender 3s that are continually being released. Perhaps I'm going about this wrong. I'd prefer to pay more for a better user experience, but your priorities may be different. 
If you want a decent printer at a good price, the X3 might be a good choice for you. It's only slightly more expensive than the Ender 3 V3 SE, with a larger build volume, a higher max nozzle temp, and a bigger screen. Obviously, there's a market for these somewhere. I guess I'm just not in the target demographic. So there you have it, the Artillery Sidewinder X3. They've pushed Marlin to its limits, but it can only go so far. Maybe keep an eye out for the X4 to see if that will be the change maker. Until then, I'll stick with the printers I already own. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know down in the comments what you think of this printer. While you're down there, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.